Hi, Captain Steve from BoatTest.com, and today I'm going to combine two of my favorite things, flying and boating, as I do a full features inspection and handling evaluation of the Icon A5 seaplane. This is a plane that's certified under the light sport aircraft category. That requires an operator to hold only a sport pilot's license rather than a private pilot's license. That makes it much easier to acquire and includes a few restrictions such as being limited to 120 knots, you can't carry more than one passenger, and you're limited to a single engine, all of which this airplane also complies with. First of all, let's go over some interesting features. There's a 100 horsepower Rotax engine with a propeller configured in a pusher configuration. There are sponsons to the side that add lift and increase stability while on the water. Taxi and landing lights are LEDs, so there's minimal battery drain, no heat generated, and they're quite bright. There's a landing gear indicator that shows an image of the plane when the gear is down. We can also hear and feel when the gear is down, and on the end of the wings, there's a mirror we can use to physically see the gear as well. The panel is laid out much like a sports car. There's the usual airspeed indicator to the left, but also an angle of attack indicator. By flying with the angle of attack indicator as the primary instrument and keeping the indicator in the green, the plane will always remain flying in its proper performance envelope. One of the coolest features is how the entire plane can be made so portable as well as storable in the average garage by folding the wings. After the wheels are chalked, simply release the latch under the wings, go to the end of the wing and pull it away from the wing root, rotate it 90 degrees, walk back to the tail and slide it forward again. Then it can be held in storage position with a pin and socket at the horizontal stabilizer. It can be released by a button on what is now the bottom of the wing. There's even a release for the tail to remove a section of that and being carbon fiber, this is all remarkably light. Of course, this had me wondering about how the connection is made between the controls and the ailerons on the wing and it's quite clever. There's a female rocker mechanism in the wing root and that is controlled by the sticks in the cockpit. When the wing is attached, this comes up against the male counterpart with rollers to allow for controlling the ailerons. And here, we can also see how the release latch for the entire wing works. So to put it all back, simply release the wing from the tail, walk it forward, rotate it 90 degrees, slide it into the root, and then latch it into position. Inside, the A5 is surprisingly quiet thanks to the engine and propeller being behind the fuselage in a pusher configuration. This is without a doubt the most docile and forgiving airplane I've ever flown. For example, she's stall and spin resistant, a stall being where the wings no longer produce lift and the nose drops rapidly. If this happens with one wing before the other, the plane rolls over and dives into a spin, typically. Not so here though. Here I attempted to make a departure stall occur by using takeoff power and continually lifting the nose to the point where control is compromised, but the A5 is having none of it. It just keeps flying, albeit while losing altitude, but remaining in full control thanks to its clever wing design. It includes vortex generators across the top of the wing and an extended leading edge to the outboard end of the wing ahead of the ailerons that keep usable air flowing over the ailerons even when the base of the wing has stopped producing lift. Basically, as long as the pilot is awake, the A5 will remain in control. This could further be demonstrated by performing what's known as the impossible turn making a U-turn back to the runway after an engine failure or even a flight out of a dead-end canyon. Here we simulate exactly that scenario with a hard climbing turn. Watch the ground speed indicator. We climb, enter the turn, and the speed plummets. We should be falling like a leaf out of control here, but the plane just keeps on flying, even when the ground speed drops to 36 knots. And we just kept doing it. On one attempt, the ground speed dropped to 6 knots, still in control. For landing, choose the landing spot carefully. Just because you landed in a location yesterday or even a few minutes ago does not mean you can do it again. Seaplanes are at the bottom of the pecking order for rights of way and must give way to everything else on the water. So a boat that wandered into your landing spot is cause for you to reevaluate your landing choice. When landing on water, unlike landing on a runway where the speed is reduced more and more until the wings stop flying, typically just above the runway, and the plane settles gently down, the water landing has the plane flown onto the water in full control at flying speed, and once on the water, then speed is reduced to where it settles in. There are no short field landings on the water. 
And it's just a bit concerning to be coming down with the terrain advisor alerting you to the fact that there's no runway in front of you. Warning, terrain ahead. The before landing checklist is simple enough. Flaps to landing, power reduced, gear up, water rudder up. Once on the water, feel free to open up the canopy. Those sponsons add stability and flotation while on the water and make taxiing on the water quite comfortable. It's also nice to have a measure of stability when adding power for takeoff. Once it's stopped, the A5 becomes a nice place to relax. I chose to sit on the wing and watch the boats coming and going, all admiring this new addition to the water. When taking off, we use flaps to add lift and shorten the run, add power, and gently lift off, not pull off, of the water. Once airspeed builds, bring up the flaps and fly away. This whole landing and takeoff procedure was demonstrated to me once, and then I did it. It's remarkably easy. Takeoff distance on the water is approximately 840 feet. Now, in addition to the A5 being fun to fly and certainly easy to fly, there are a lot of safety features that are built into the plane. You've got the IPS, the Icon Parachute System, so if you do end up with a real problem that you can't get out of, just pop the parachute, float safely to the ground. You've got the reliability of the Rotax 100 horsepower engine. It's spin resistant and it's got basic systems, so it's not a complicated plane to fly like you see all around the airport. Now, if you don't feel like you're in a position to buy this airplane, there is a partnership club available on this plane here out of New Bedford called Low Altitude Adventures. So you can contact them at lowaltitudeadventures.com. Work out a membership for yourself. And that's my full features inspection and handling evaluation of the Icon A5. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water or well, maybe in the air. Probably on the water. Maybe on the air. On the water. Maybe in the air.